Shortly after victory in Europe Day, Eric Hartman was forced to surrender to the American troops. But in an unexpected twist, he was turned over to the Soviets, who imprisoned him for a decade to avenge the hundreds of pilots who had fallen at the hand of the German ace. The brilliant fighter pilot had flown over 1,400 combat sorties during World War II, and after engaging in aerial combat 825 times, he claimed an unrivaled 352 victories, officially becoming the highest scoring pilot of all time. But not only was he the most productive fighter pilot of the war, even though he crashed 14 times after hitting the debris of the aircraft he destroyed, many enemies continually tried to shoot him down. The skilled pilot would not go down without putting up a fight. The Dominant Factor Eric Bubby Hartman was born on April 19, 1922 in Weizach, near Württemberg. His father, a doctor, had a general practice in Changsha, China, but the family relocated to Stuttgart in 1928, when foreigners began to be unwelcome. Hartman's mother was a licensed pilot, one of Germany's first female glider pilots. She instilled a keen passion for flying in her son, teaching him the basics from a very young age. Then, at 14, the teenager became a licensed glider pilot too, and within a year, he was a flight instructor in the Hitler Youth. Hartmann's proper military training started in October of 1940 in East Prussia. Eric Schmidt, author of the book Black Tulip, said in an interview with Smithsonian Magazine that Hartmann was one of the few German pilots who got through training early on in the war before the Germans saw any combat on the dreaded Eastern Front. Hartmann thoroughly knew his aircraft, mission, and tactics, primarily using the Luftwaffe's backbone, the Messerschmitt Bf 109. And like Schmidt said, quote, Pilot training is almost always the dominant factor in an air battle. The young pilot got his military license in August of 1941 and graduated as a lieutenant in March of 1942. Afterward, he attended advanced aerial gunnery school, where he got into trouble several times. On one occasion, he rebelliously showed off and buzzed the airfield, for which he was sentenced to house arrest. Not long after, the promising talent was deployed to the Eastern Front. Commandments. Lieutenant Hartmann's first assignment was with the most successful fighter wing of all time, the Jagdgeschwader 52. At first, the young lieutenant mainly flew as a wingman to the squadron leaders, so he had fewer opportunities to score a victory. As his biographer described, quote, he always seemed a little like a boy who was out of place. He definitely wasn't the super masculine archetype. Hartmann was coached by Oberfeldwebel Edmund Paula Russman, one of the best-regarded leaders on the Eastern Front at the time, and received the advice of several prominent figures like Oberfeldwebel Alfred Gislovsky and Lieutenant Walter Krupinski. One day, while flying beside Rossmann, Hartmann received a signal from his mentor, who had spotted ten enemy aircraft directly below them. At 12,000 feet, the enemy was too far away, and the young pilot could not see anything, but followed Rossmann without hesitating. The amateur pilot then went to full throttle and let his guide shoot at an aircraft. Yet he recalled, quote, Suddenly I was surrounded by the Soviets, and I headed for low cloud cover to escape. Then the engine went dead, and I bellied in, destroying my fighter. I knew I was in trouble. I'd violated every commandment a fighter pilot lives by, and I expected to be thrown out. Hartman was not thrown out, but he was sentenced to three days of work with the ground crews. Loyalty The Eastern Front was unforgiving, but Hartman was never desperate or even doubtful. His biographer claimed that he had a reputation for coolness and, quote, like most fighter pilots, he also had a confidence and a stick-to-it mindset that served him well. Hartman celebrated his first hit on November 5, 1942, bringing down the most formidable aircraft at the time, a heavily armored Stromovic IL-2. As Hartman described, he had to shoot out the oil cooler underneath, or otherwise it would not come down. However, the pilot irremediably flew into the debris and was forced to crash land. He recalled, quote, I learned two things that day. Get in close and shoot and break away immediately. By mid-May of 1943, the lieutenant had scored 17 victories. Still, he soon collided with an LAGG-3 fighter and had to force land his BF-109 G-4 called White II. After a few weeks to recover, Hartman was back in the game and his tally almost tripled by the end of July. He then doubled his score in August, settling his 90th hit before the month was over. Following that victory, 
Hartman had to execute an emergency landing behind enemy lines, as his fighter was hit by debris. Upon landing, the Soviets captured him. Hartman's crew chief and best friend, Heinz Mertens, immediately took a rifle and some water and went looking for him. Hartman would later say, quote, That is a loyalty you never find outside the military. Nevertheless, the pilot feigned internal injuries and was put on a stretcher and a truck en route to a hospital. As he fooled his captors, the astute young man escaped and was back in German territory in two days. Anti-dogfighting strategy Hartman scored his 100th victory towards the end of September 1943, and he hit 150 before the end of the year. Notably, Hartman downed no less than 10 Russian Lend-Lease Bell Aerocobra fighters on a single day, February 26, 1944, raising his tally to 200. The Aces fighter displayed a black tulip around the engine cowling, which distinguished him as he gained notoriety among the Soviets. He soon earned the nickname Cherny Chort, or Black Devil. Whenever Soviet pilots recognized his mark, they would break up contact, and it didn't take long for Joseph Stalin to put a 10,000 ruble prize on his head. Hartman's streak then began to drop as the Soviets started fleeing from him. Consequently, he decided to allow new recruits to fly his fighter, letting them observe in a relatively safe halo of protection. It wasn't until he resolved to drop the tulip design and fly in an anonymous 109 instead that Hartman managed to get another 50 hits in just two months. Several analysts explain that his dogfighting strategy was an excellent match for the circumstances on the Eastern Front. Moreover, Schmidt said, quote, It was more of an anti-dogfighting strategy, really. Astutely, Hartman avoided twisting and turning engagements that would have rendered him vulnerable. Instead, he would seek quick surprise approaches at an extremely close range. Moreover, he would save ammunition to confront more enemies, and would never alert his target before it was indispensable. In truth, most of his victims never knew of his presence until it was too late. According to Eric Schmidt, quote, This is exactly as it should have been, since he usually had free hunt missions, a choice of targets, and the luxury of deciding when and if to engage. Facing the Unknown The front in Crimea crumbled in the summer of 1944, and Hartman and two of his ground crew in the baggage locker of his 109 were forced to retreat on May 8th. In the meantime, the ace would see combat over Romania, and for the first time, against American air power. On May 21st, Hartman was tasked to intercept American daylight bombing raids on Romanian oil fields. He first attacked four P-51 Mustangs over Bucharest, and downed two. Ten days later, he managed to shoot down four P-51s in a single mission. In late June, he shot down another two, and while being chased by eight Mustangs, the pilot had to bail out after running out of fuel. As he glided down, he waved at a Mustang that flew by to photograph him. During his fifth and last engagement with the Americans, he barely missed being shot down. Had he stayed longer, he might not have survived. Fortunately for him, he was summoned back to Crimea, where he became the first fighter pilot to record 300 victories on August 24th. That day, he shot down no less than 11 enemy aircraft. Hartman was then awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves, swords, and diamonds. Prisoner of War Towards the end of the war, in February of 1945, Hartman received command of the 52nd Fighter Wing. He was then transferred to the ME-262 Jet Striker Unit for training, but requested to return to his squadron. On April 17, 1945, Hartman became the only pilot to ever achieve 350 victories and was subsequently promoted to Major. Then, on VE Day, he claimed his 352nd and last hit against a Yak-9 fighter over Czechoslovakia. Soon after, the Major had to surrender to the American troops. However, he was handed over to the Soviets two weeks later, holding him as a prisoner for an entire decade. He was finally let go in 1955, having consolidated his place as the top-scoring fighter pilot among all the combatants in the war. Hartman ultimately flew 825 missions and force-landed 14 times during his career, but was never once shot down. Thank you for watching my video. Don't hesitate to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for many more epic stories from the World Wars. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and click on the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Stay tuned.